Welcome to Bread to Lead, the podcast that empowers you to unleash your leadership potential in making a lasting impact. I'm your host, Dr. Jake Taylor Jacobs, and I'm on a mission to help you cultivate the mindset and skills to lead with purpose, authenticity, and heart. In today's episode, we're diving deep into a critical distinction that can make or break your ability to drive transformative change in your organization. It's the difference between management and leadership. It's a distinction that often blurred or overlooked, but one that has profound implications for how we approach our roles, our teams, and our impact in the world. I'll see you inside the podcast. You see, for too long, we've relied on a model of leadership that's really more about management, about controlling people, processes, and resources to achieve whatever the predefined goals and objectives were. It's a model that prizes efficiency, predictability, and short-term results over innovation, adaptability, and long-term value creation. And while it may have served us well in the past, it's becoming increasingly clear <laughs> that this approach is no longer sufficient in a world of constant change and complexity and disruption that happens every day. To thrive in this new reality, we need a different kind of leadership, one that transcends the limitations of management and unleashes the full potential of our people and organizations. We need leaders who are willing and able to take the leap from merely managing the status quo to driving meaningful, transformative change. And that's what we're here to explore today. But before we dive into what this leadership leap looks like in practice, let's take a moment to define our terms. What exactly do we mean by management and leadership and how are they different? At its core, management is about coping with complexity. It's about bringing order and consistency to chaos about optimizing systems and processes to achieve specific measurable results. Managers are responsible for planning, budgeting, organizing, staffing, controlling, and problem solving. All important functions to be sure, but they're ultimately focused on the how of getting things done efficiently and effectively within the constraints of the current paradigm, meaning they can't create outside the paradigm created for them. They manage what has been built, not creating things that can be new. Leadership, on the other hand, it's about coping with change. It's about setting direction, aligning people, and inspiring them to achieve a shared vision of the future. Leaders are the ones who challenge the status quo, who ask the tough questions, and take the bold risk necessary to drive innovation and transformation. The focus on the what and the why of creating a better tomorrow, even if it means disrupting the way things have always been done. As John Cotter, the renowned change man management expert puts it, management is about dealing with complexity. Leadership is about dealing with change. Both are important, but the function of leadership is to produce change, sometimes even dramatic discontinuous change. The problem is that in many organizations today, we conflated these two functions and created a culture that prizes management over leadership. We promote and reward people based on their ability to hit short-term targets, to manage budgets and headcounts, to keep the trains running at all times. And while these skills are certainly valuable, they're not sufficient for driving the change of breakthrough, thinking and action that we need to thrive in a rapidly changing world. In fact, an overemphasis on management can actually stifle creativity, risk-taking, and innovation. When people are too focused on following rules and procedures, on avoiding mistakes and minimizing variances, they lose sight of the bigger picture and the possibilities for growth and transformation. They become more concerned with protecting their own turf and preserving the status quo than with challenging assumptions and exploring new frontiers. But here's the good news. Just as management 
is a set of skills and practices that can be learned and developed. So too is leadership. It's not some innate quality that either you have it or you don't. It's a capability that can be cultivated and honed over time with intention in practice. And that's what we're going to focus on for the rest of this episode. So what does it take to make the leadership leap? How can we transcend the limitations of management and become the kind of transformative leaders that our teams and organizations need? While there's no simple formula or one size fit all approach, there are a few key shifts in mindset and behavior there are, that, that are essential for any leader looking to drive meaningful change. Now, if you're new to this podcast, what I'm going to stop here and say is I'm big on note taking. So when I when I'm breaking down things, I say one, you should write this down. It's like class. Write it down. Get a pen. Notate it. Uh, voice recorded so you can remember it for later on to listen to. These are functions. The purpose of this podcast is not for you just to listen and be inspired. The purpose of this podcast is for you to listen, be inspired and go create change. That's why I'm always going to give you points and and things to 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 lean on or things to point out or to circle or to write down so you can remember that these things are not just mere podcast episodes that what we're creating are action items and things that can help cultivate your change for those that have been listening you already know what time it is number one write this down from problem solving to problem finding one of the core functions of management is problem solving identifying and fixing issues as they arise in order to keep operations running smoothly and while this is certainly important It's not enough for leadership because the truth is in a complex and rapidly changing world, many of the most significant challenges and opportunities we face are not immediately obvious or well-defined. They require a different kind of thinking altogether. We talk about this in our newest book, Bread to Lead, by the way, y'all. Transformative leaders, therefore, need to be skilled, not just at problem solving, But at problem finding, they need to be able to look beyond the immediate symptoms and surface level issues to identify the deeper, more systemic challenges and opportunities that are shaping the future. They need to be able to ask the right questions to challenge assumptions and reframe problems in a new and novel way. In practice, this means spending less time firefighting and more time exploring, less time reacting and more time anticipating. It means getting out of the weeds of the day to day operations and taking a broader, more strategic view of the landscape. It means engaging in ongoing environmental scanning, trend analysis and scenario planning to stay ahead of the curve and spot emerging possibilities and threats. But it also means cultivating a culture of curiosity, experimentation and continuous learning within your team and organization. Encouraging people to ask questions to challenge the status quo, to make smart risks and learn from their failures, creating space and permission from divergent thinking and constructive dissent rather than just rushing to consensus or compromise. As a leader, one powerful way to model and encourage this kind of problem finding mindset is through the use of how might we questions rather than starting with a predefined problem or solution Say, how might we? These these questions open up space for exploration and ideation. They invite people to imagine new possibilities and reframe challenges in more expansive ways. For example, instead of asking, how can we increase sales by 10% this quarter? A transformative leader might ask, how might we create value for our customers in ways that are not yet being served by the market? Instead of asking, how can we cut costs in this department? You might want to ask, how might we fundamentally reimagine our business model to be more efficient and more cost effective? By making this shift from problem solving to problem finding, leaders can tap into the collective intelligence and creativity of their teams and organizations. They can surface new ideas, insights and innovation that might otherwise have gone unnoticed or unexplored. And they can position themselves and their organizations 
to not just react to change, but to proactively shape and lead it. Number two, write this down. Go from directing to empowering. Oh, this is a good one. Another key insight in distinction between management and leadership is in how they approach the tasks of getting things done through others. Managers, by a large, by and large, operate through a model of command and control, setting goals, assigning tasks, and holding people accountable for results. The primary tools are directives, incentives, and consequences. Carrots and sticks to ensure compliance and performance. Leaders, on the other hand, understand that in a world of increasing complexity and interdependence, this top-down approach is no longer effective or sustainable. They recognize that the key to unleashing creativity, adaptability, and engagement is not to tighten their grip on power, but to let go and empower others to step up and lead. As transformative leaders, then... Our job is not to have all the answers or to make all of the decisions. It's to create the conditions and build the capabilities that allow our teams to take ownership of challenges and opportunities, to experiment with new ideas and approaches, and to learn and grow in the process. In practice, this means shifting from a mindset of directing to one of empowering. It means providing people with the clarity of purpose, the resources and support and the autonomy and agency they need to do their best work. It means treating them not as subordinates to be managed, but as partners and collaborators in the quest for shared success. One powerful framework for this kind of empowering leadership is David Marquette's intent based leadership model which he developed as captain of the USS Santa Fe, a nuclear powered submarine. The core idea is to push decision-making authority as far down the chain of command as possible while still providing the necessary context guidance and guardrails for success. Rather than telling people what to do or how to do intent based leaders focus on clarifying the what and the why the overall goals and objectives, and the values and principles that should guide decision-making. They then trust and empower their teams to figure out the how. The specific strategies, tactics, and actions needed to achieve those goals in alignment with those values. This is a profound shift from the traditional command and control model of leadership. It requires a deep belief in the potential and capacity of others and willingness to let go of ego and control, and a commitment to continuous learning and improvement. But when done, it can unleash tremendous energy, creativity, and ownership at all levels of the organization. For an example, Marquette tells the story of how he turned around the performance of the Santa Fe. From one of the worst performing submarines in the fleet to one of the best, when he first took command, he found a crew that was disengaged, risk adverse, and dependent on orders from above. They had little sense of ownership or pride in their work and made frequent mistakes and errors in judgment. But as he began to implement intent-based leadership, things started to change. He worked with the crew to clarify the what and the why of their mission and to define a set of core values and principles that would guide their behavior. He then began to push decision-making authority down to the lowest possible level asking his crew to take ownership of challenges and opportunities as they arose. At first, this was uncomfortable and even scary for many of the crew members. They were used to being told what to do and weren't sure how to handle the newfound autonomy and responsibility. But as they began to step up and take ownership, they started to see the power and potential of this new way of operating. They became more proactive and creative in identifying and solving problems, more willing to take calculated risks and learn from failures. They began to communicate and collaborate more effectively across different roles and functions, breaking down silos and leveraging each other's strengths. And they started to take greater pride and ownership in their work, seeing themselves not as just cogs in a machine, but a vital contributor to a shared mission and purpose. As a result, the Santa Fe went from being mediocre performer 
to one of the most effective and respected submarines in the fleet. They won numerous awards and accolades and set new records for operational excellence mission and missions accomplished. And perhaps most importantly, they developed a culture of empowerment, innovation, and continuous improvement that endured long after Marquette's departure. Of course, implementing intent-based leadership or any other model of empowering leadership is not a quick fix or a silver bullet. It requires a significant investment of time, energy, and resources to build the necessary trust, alignment, and capabilities across the organization. It requires ongoing coaching, feedback, and support to help people develop the skills and mindsets needed to thrive in this new way of working. But for the transformative leaders who are willing to make the investment, the payoff can be immense. By empowering others to step up and lead, we tap into a well of creativity, commitment, and resilience that can drive sustained performance and growth over time. We build organizations that are more agile, innovative, and responsive to change. And we create a legacy of leadership that endures beyond our own tenure and position. Number three, write it down. Write this down, y'all. Are we sharing the good stuff? Write this down. As we're preparing to write down the last point, remember breadtolead.com. You go to breadtolead.com, you can get access to our book or you can go straight to Amazon. Bread to Lead is now available on Amazon. You can go to breadtolead.com or go straight to Amazon to get the book. And of course, this is a Sips Healthcare Solutions, a.k.a. Sips Consults a podcast on leadership and organizational growth and change. We are a healthcare consulting, advising and staffing company, innovators and leaders, pioneers in the leadership placement or leadership consulting space for sterile processing. So if you're interested in getting into healthcare through sterile processing, you want to work yourself to become a consultant and become somebody who's creating change in the facilities that are touching each and every one of our lives every day. Please reach out to us. You can go to bread to lead dot com and click that SIPS logo. Press the logo. It'll take you right to our site so you can find out more and more about the information. And then two. For those of you that are interested, that's already in healthcare, and you're interested in our SIPS Leadership Institute, we are launching the SIPS Leadership Institute this month in June. If you're listening to this podcast and it's past June 2024, it's already active and live. If you're listening to this podcast actively, SIPS Leadership Institute will be launching on the week of June 24. First, okay, so SIPS Leadership Institute will be launching in that time where we're going to be creating training modules that you can actually take that give you a deeper dive on how to become the leader you dream to become so you can change the world the way that God dreamt for you to change it. Okay, so we're going back to the podcast because we are not done because number three is absolutely amazing. Number three, from transactional to transformational. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. From transactional to transformational. This is very key. The third key distinction between management, the third key distinction between management and leadership lies in the nature of the relationships and interactions they foster. Managers, by and large, listen to me, listen to me very clear. Listen to me very clear. Managers, by and large, operate through a transactional model, a quid pro quo exchange of rewards and consequences for specific behaviors and outputs. They use their positional power and authority to get people to do what needs to be done, often with little regard for their intrinsic motivation or long term development. Leaders, on the other hand, recognize that sustainable high performance and engagement requires a different kind of relationship altogether. One based not on compliance or coercion, but on inspiration, trust, and mutual commitment to a shared vision and purpose. One that taps into people's deepest values, aspirations, and potential, and connects them to something greater than themselves. 
This is the essence of James Burns, the pioneering scholar of leadership studies called transformational leadership. In contrast, transactional leadership, which focuses on the exchange of tangible re rewards for specific behaviors. Transformational leadership focuses on the transformation of both leader and follower toward higher levels of motivation, morality and performance. Transformational leaders do this by engaging in what Burns called the fundamental leadership act. The creation and communication of a compelling vision of a better future, a vision that challenges the status quo, that inspires hope and possibility, and that unites people around a common cause and identity, a vision that speaks to people's hearts as well as their minds, and that taps into their innate desire to be part of something meaningful and important. But transformational leaders don't just articulate a vision. They embody it in their own actions and interactions. They model the values, behaviors, and mindsets that seek to cultivate in, in others. They create a sense of trust, respect, and psychological safety that allows people to bring their full selves to work. And they challenge and support people to grow and develop in ways that align with their own sense of purpose and potential. One classic example of transformational leadership in action is actually Martin Luther King Jr.'s role in the civil rights movement in 1960s. King didn't just advocate for specific policy changes or legislation reforms. Although they were certainly important, he painted a vivid, compelling picture of a world in which people wouldn't be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. A world in which all people, regardless of race or background, could live with dignity, equality and justice. This vision was deeply rooted in King's own values and beliefs, and he embodied it in his own life and leadership. He modeled the courage, compassion and commitment that he called for in others, even in the face of violence, persecution and death threats. He created a sense of solidarity, a sense of purpose among a diverse coalition of activists, organizers, and everyday citizens. He challenged and inspired people to rise above their own limitations and fears and to take bold action in service of the greater good. Through his transformational leadership, King helped galvanize a movement that transformed not just laws and policies, but hearts and minds. He helped to shift the cultural narrative and consciousness around race and equality in America and to create a new sense of possibility and moral urgency. And while the work of justice and inequity is far from finished, his legacy continues to inspire and inform new generations of leaders and change makers all over the world. Of course, not all of us were called to lead social movements or global revolutions, but the principles and practices of transformational leadership are relevant and applicable in any context where we seek to drive meaningful, lasting change, whether we're leading a team, an organization, or a community, we have the opportunity and the responsibility to engage in the fundamental leadership act of creating and communicating a compelling vision of a better future. To do this effectively, we need to start by getting clear on our own values and beliefs and sense of purpose. We need to ask ourselves, what do we stand for? What kind of world do we want to create? What legacy do we want to leave behind? These are not just abstract or theoretical questions. They are the foundation upon which we build our leadership and our impact. We also need to cultivate the skills and practices of effective communication and inspiration. This means learning to speak and write in ways that engage people's emotions as well as their intellect, that paint a vivid, tangible picture of what's possible and that connect people to a sense of meaning and purpose beyond themselves. It means learning to listen deeply and emphatically to others, to create space for authentic dialogue and collaboration. And perhaps more importantly, we need to model the change we seek to create in the world. We need to embody the values and behaviors that we espouse, even when it's difficult or unpopular. We need to create a culture of trust, respect and psychological safety that allows people to bring their full selves to work. 
And we need to challenge and support people to grow and develop in ways that align with their own sense of purpose and potential. This kind of transformational leadership is not easy. It's not for everyone. It requires willingness to take risks, to change the status quo, and to lead with courage and conviction, even in the face of resistance or setbacks. It requires a deep commitment to personal growth and development and a willingness to be vulnerable and authentic in our interactions with others. But for those who are called to this kind of leadership, the rewards are immeasurable. The opportunity to make real and lasting difference in somebody's life, to create a better world for future generations and to leave a legacy of positive change and impact. The change, the chance to tap into our own deepest values and potential and to inspire others to do the same. As transformative leaders, then our job is not just to manage the present, but to create the future, to transcend the limitations of the status quo, and to drive meaningful, lasting change in service of a greater good, to take the leap from transactional to transformational leadership, and to engage in the fundamental act of creating and communicating a compelling vision of a better tomorrow. This is the essence of the leadership leap. The shift from simply managing complexity to driving real and meaningful change. It's a shift that requires us to challenge our own assumptions and habits, to cultivate new mindsets and skills, and to engage others in a shared journey of growth and transformation. But it's a shift that is urgently needed in our organizations, our communities, and our world today. In a time of rapid change and disruption and uncertainty, we need leaders who can see beyond the immediate challenges and opportunities and who can inspire and empower others to create a better future together. We need leaders who can ask the right questions, not just provide the right answers, who can let go of control and empower others to lead, who can tap into the people's deepest motivations and aspirations and connect them to a greater sense of purpose and meaning. These are the leaders who will not just survive, but thrive in the years and decades ahead. The ones who will create organizations and communities that are more agile, innovative and resilient in the face of change. The ones who will not just adapt to the future, but actively shape it in the service of a greater good. And while this kind of transformational leadership may seem daunting and even impossible at times, the truth is that it is within the reach for all of us. It starts with a willingness to look within ourselves to clarify our own values and purpose and to take responsibility for our own growth and development. It starts with a commitment to cultivating the mindsets and the skills of effective leadership and to seeking out opportunities to practice and apply them in our own lives and work. And it starts with a recognition that leadership is not about position or power but about the impact and influence we have on others that each of us, regardless of our title or role has the opportunity and the obligation to lead in ways large and small, to be a force for positive change in our own sphere of influence and to inspire and empower others to do the same. So as we come to an end of this exploration of leadership leap, I want to leave you with a few final thoughts and challenges. First, I invite you to reflect on your own leadership journey and ask yourself, where am I currently on the spectrum of management and leadership? What are the mindsets, habits and practices that are holding me back from making the leap to transformational leadership? And what is one small step I can take today to start to bridge that gap? Secondly, I encourage you to seek out opportunities to practice and apply the principles and practice of transformative leadership in your own life and work. This means volunteering for a stretch assignment or taking on a new role that challenges you to grow and develop as a leader. It might mean seeking out feedback and coaching from trusted mentors and peers and being open to new perspectives and ways of thinking. Or it might mean starting a conversation with your team or organization about what it would take to create a culture of empowerment, innovation, and continuous learning. And thirdly, I challenge you to think bigger and bolder about the kind of impact and legacy you want to leave as a leader. To ask yourself, what is the vision of a better future that inspires or motivates me? What are the values and principles that guide my actions and decisions? 
And how can I use my leadership to create positive change and leave the world a little bit better than I found it? There are no easy questions. There are no simple answers, but they are the questions that all great leaders must grapple with and that all of us must engage with if we want to make a real and lasting difference in the world. Because at the end of the day, leadership is not about us as individuals. It's about the people and the causes we serve, the communities and the world we seek to create. It's about tapping into something greater than ourselves and using our gifts and talents to make a positive impact on others. And that's what the Leadership Leap is about. It's about transcending our own limitations and fears, stepping up to the challenge of driving meaningful, transformative change. It's about empowering and inspiring others to be their best selves and to work together towards a shared vision of a better tomorrow. It's a journey that requires courage, compassion, and commitment. But it's a journey that is worth taking because the stakes are too high. The opportunities are too great to do otherwise. So as we close this episode of Bread to Lead, I want to thank you for being a part of this conversation, this community, for your willingness to engage with these ideas and challenges and to do the hard work of leadership in your own lives and organizations. And I want you to remind, I want to remind you that you are not alone in this journey that there are countless of others out there who share your same passion, your same purpose, and who are working tirelessly to create a better world for us all. Together, we have the power to make the leadership leap, to transcend the limitations of management, and to drive the kind of meaningful, transformative change that our organizations and our world so desperately needs. So let us go forth from this moment with renewed courage, conviction, and commitment. Let us be the leaders we wish to see in the world and let us work together to create a future that is more just, more sustainable and more fulfilling for all. The leadership leap is waiting. The future is calling. Let's answer that call with all that we have and all God intended for us to be. Thank you for listening and for being a part of this movement for purpose and change. Until next time, keep leading with purpose, authenticity and heart. The world needs you. And the best is yet to come. This is Dr. Jake Taylor Jacobs. Peace.